Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the games. You didn't think I forgot about you, did you? Come on, Star Citizens. Look at this. Mm, exploring. It's a lot more dangerous than people think it is. It's underrated. But a good explorer can bring in a lot of money. And there should be risk. And today, gamers, we're going to get in-depth with the constellation Ikea. Thanks to our community member, Tekla, Triple M, my favorite. We're going to go outside. A lot of people say, you can't go outside. Oh, no. We're going to go outside. We're going to go fly. Well, we're going to go outside. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I do. I put a comprehensive library of everything I've ever seen together on one video. I talk about everything, the technicals, the, the, the pricing, if I think it's good or not, positive, negative, all truth, all here, all in the games, sitting in the driver's seat. That's right. That's why you come here. For that honest critique, that review, is the constellation worth your money? What can it do for you? Let's find out and let's have a good time. Don't forget. While I make this video here at 4 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> we need help to grow. So go over to my Patreon page and pledge if you like this. If you like any of this, a dollar a month, $12 a year. It's like what, two combo meals? Get ready. Enough about that. Let's get into what we want. The Constellation, that's why we're here, people. Let's figure out if this is the ship for you. Should you get this ship? Huh? Are you an explorer? Do you want it? Oh, I'm feeling excited now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel it in my balls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't you feel it in your balls tonight? Sorry, that's that's completely inappropriate, but funny as hell. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Al. <laughs> We're going to talk more than just text and specs. We're going to talk about exploration in itself and what it means to be an explorer in the game. I don't ever see anybody talk about that in these types of videos. So, welcome to something new and refreshing. Uh, this is a very large area here on the deck. I like the view. Uh, I like... The feeling of sitting in this captain's chair. I think that the captain's chair could be maybe a little farther up so that I have a slightly better view. Uh, but I'm cool with the space. I don't feel like the ship's going anywhere anytime soon. And I believe it could take some damage. So one of the things that we should really be talking about is the fact that since this is an exploration ship, we're talking about sensors sensory overload and i really mean that there are sensors upon sensors upon sensors and what how are you going to use them what do they mean these sensors here let's really get in on this stuff here whoops <laughs> like for instance you know here we have readings we don't know what they mean yet there we have readings they just have the standard kind of picture in there these will be active in some way. I want these sensors to mean something. I want there to be a UI panel where I can actually control this as if I were like in a computer looking at a spreadsheet or I had a uh, control of what the data was. Data in this ship is paramount. Data in this ship is stuff that you can sell. So you should be able to have a very easy user interface and the other thing I think that nobody ever talks about when looking at ships that are modded cruise ships are, can you fly the ship by yourself? For instance, imagine you plop down the money for this. It's a lot of money, right? You don't really want to be losing this anytime soon, but you don't have to worry because it will be insured. So a lot of people worry, well, if I go exploring and I blow up, I'm going to lose the ship. Don't worry. It is insured. And the other thing, too, is... You should be very careful with any major purchase. Once you get a ship like this, you want to make sure you're going into areas where you understand before you go into it. And I will be making videos to make sure that you do. So don't worry about that. But 
I, I really wonder because I think to myself when I see a ship like this that is just it is a beautiful ship what is besides the role of exploration <clears throat> how many people do I need to fly this ship you know you've got a sensor panel over here that I hope is going to do something you've got sensors each one of these things should be have a function should do something and that's one of the challenges that um you know the design team's going to have is what do they do what are they reading can i know i know this is very interesting let's see if i can get this work to work sometimes it's pretty buggy here but if we look right at it there we go a lot of people don't know that we sit in here and we go to the science turret up top you cannot go into the turret down the bottom yet but there is a gun turret down bottom and we'll talk about defensive abilities with the ship but let's talk about the sensors first the cool thing about this ship, <clears throat> it is the sensor, uh, besides the Carrick, which which hopefully we'll be able to do a review on as well, this is a very powerful ship when it comes to being able to find and analyze um, wormholes, uh, ore fields, anything that is out there, you should be able to find with this ship, including other ships. And everybody says, okay, well, what about, you know, using this as an attack roll ship okay maybe but i don't necessarily see this as an attack roll ship all of the the turrets and the defensive systems that are on this are meant to like you know dissuade anybody that happens to find you but if you're a really good pilot with this ship you shouldn't be found because you should be able to find everybody before they find you and i would also highly recommend people that get this ship to go with a black paint color because this is going to stand out and you're going to be a large target no matter how well defendable you are just remember this if i'm flying a hornet i can hit you with that hornet real hard <laughs> this is a big target but these sensors are fantastic uh planetary sensors that will go down and analyze planets um that that's also included uh, with this there's plenty of additional spots on this we'll, again we'll go over text a little bit more in detail later down the road but i'm just talking about how sensors play a role with this ship and how to use this ship you should be able to find the threats before they find you avoid the threats and use this ship more as an exploration ship that finds data that you can sell for mega bucks buy five more of these types of ships you know i love the ikea because of the kia class ship out of all the constellation ships obviously you have more slots and you have more uh, a variety of what you can do with this type of ship but you can load it load it up with sensors and and um, i highly recommend that you do but we have to make sure that <sighs> they have an easy user interface i want to see sig have an easy user interface you know i love to tout somebody when they do stuff right but i also love to critique when i don't see it yet and i'm not seeing or hearing what exactly they're going to do with all of this and if this is a ship that you can in fact fly by yourself if it is this complicated of a ship with this many sensors I would almost imagine if you want to make this realistic that you should not really be able to fly this by yourself. And if you are, it's to see grandma over at planet Killian or you know what I'm saying? Like you fly it over there for basic stuff, but you're not going to be able to use it to its hundred percent usability without more than one person. So one thing to think about, I need more information about that. Obviously, if anybody does in the community, put that down and I will put it in the description, but let's look at this commercial and let's watch and see how, they're using the ship with the sensors and the graphics. Let's watch. Exiting interspace. Location unknown. Everyone okay? I'm fine, sir. Did we get it? Jump point has started, sir. Good. Comms, we got any contact? No, sir. Scope is clear. Keep looking. Scarlet, take us on the tour. With pleasure. She's all yours, Doctor. We've got a protoplanet, no atmosphere. Unknown planet two.
there's an atmosphere. Okay, so the first thing you noticed was that the captain, let's go right here, here, and turn around here. Let's uh, do this, and let's do that. Now, the first thing you noticed was the captain was sitting in the middle, obviously. He then asked the guy to his right, I'm looking at it to our left right now, but he asked this gentleman about comms, if he's got any contacts. So the guy in this seat is working comms. Then over here, he said, let's take a tour to this girl sitting over here who happened to actually then look like she was piloting the ship. Now, the question is this. Everything that just happened, look at the similarities with the control panels in each seat. So we're kind of answering our own questions here. It does seem like they are all very similar and possibly meaning since they look similar, they will all have the same functions. So that just in itself by watching that video kind of answers the question that maybe in fact you will be able to have all these options at your fingertips, but it would be easier to assign people roles and have them focused on only those things so that you're more efficient. So I think we're getting a little bit more answers here. Now the woman in back here that was working this display looks completely different than the three up front. This deals with planets and the contents of planets. All the data that you can gather from this is fascinating, but you will need another person or you will just need to get up out of the captain's seat and then walk over if you feel like it's safe enough. And then you've got wormholes, right? You've got two sensors on the front of the constellation that analyze wormholes uh, or find jump points then analyze the wormholes. We have a video that gets into this. I won't get into the technicals on, on these. Uh, if you want, just click that card. And we've got a video all about this subject matter. Um, but flying a, a constellation through this seems like it would be a very difficult thing, which is maybe why they were breathing so hard when they got to the other side. Could you imagine flying something through this violent and that and not dying and discovering the other side and knowing you have to go back to sell that information? That would be like a, a killer. And that's one of the things I want to talk about with exploration. You with the death mechanics, you could lose yourself. You could lose yourself. Yeah. What do I mean? What do I mean you can lose yourself? Exactly how it sounds. <laughs> Let's just go back to the back of the ship here and uh, don't worry. There's plenty of videos where you see this other stuff. Where I'm sure most of you have seen it before. Uh, you know, this isn't that type of video. <laughs> Let's go here. We'll talk about the dock. We will definitely talk about the dock. And we're going to talk about freight and cargo. But how do you lose yourself, right? One of the things I find really interesting is this section of the ship. Okay, in this section of the ship, let's see if we can zoom out. We can zoom out here, but this is the hatch down of the P-52 Merlin, which really isn't talked about a lot. Now, a P-52 Merlin pilot on a Constellation ship has to have balls made of brass. you got to have them brass balls to, to uh, fly this ship. Let's go down here and let's look at the P-52 Merlin slot on the outside of the ship and, and what do I mean? What am I talking about here? Oh God, this is so great. I love this. I love this. I love this. This is where the Rover is going to be. We won't get into that yet. I've got a whole fun part about the Rover here, but this is the P-52 Merlin slot on your constellation. It's a separate ship that actually is able to, you know, fly out, detach. It's, it's labeled as a short range fighter, short range. Okay. Here, let's look at the technicals right now, okay? You'll notice what it's capable of. One thing that it won't be capable of is jumping. Now, that means this ship is really dependent upon the mama ship. And I see more of this ship as, a, of course, it's a glass cannon, you know? You, you be, you'll have to be a great pilot if you're going to fight in this. And like I said earlier, if you're found in this ship, you're flying this ship wrong anyway. You know, I see this ship as a scout ship. I see the ship as the ship that goes down first before the constellation hits the planet. You know, they show the constellation hitting the planet in the commercial, but they never really get into the P-52 discussion. And some people are saying the P-52 will not be on future uh, uh, features of the IKEA, which I think is a huge mistake. So I hope there. I hope the RSI community, the the SIG community, is is listening to this because I think the P-52 Merlin plays a role on being the first to land on the planets almost like a scout. Let's watch this. Imagine. Imagine a ship that you just paid $275 for and God only knows what the equivalent credits are going to be in the game for this ship once you can pay with the in-game credits. It's going to be a lot. It's going to it's going to hurt if you lose it. 
But imagine you do get to another planet that nobody's discovered, like this one. You're gonna want to just drop your constellation down on the planet if there's life. Are you willing to lose that $275 or are you willing to actually lose a lot less by putting the Merlin on the ground first? So, I don't think you can pilot this by yourself if you want to go this route and explore planets. Maybe by yourself for a while, but if you want to explore the planets, you're going to at least need a second person and this, to fly down on this. And then this opens up a whole new realm. You can get lost. You're an explorer. Imagine something happens while you're down on the planet. Say you're the pilot. Says, you know what? Cool, man. I'm going down. I'll make sure it's okay. This is where the game gets different than any other game I've ever played. You go down there, and then guess what? Something happens up top. Something happens with the ship. If your friend dies, you know, you're, you're up a river. Now you're a derelict. You're, you're forlorn on this planet. <laughs> Unless you just want to off yourself. But who's going to find you? You're all alone, man. You're on this planet. The death mechanics means if you kill this guy, this character's done for good. And then you go on to your next character that you sign over to your next of kin as far, as far as the death mechanics are concerned. But that really plays upon the psychology of the player. How long are you willing to stay on this planet for? I want this game to be this way because it just, could you imagine somebody that decides, okay, I'm going to stay on the planet until somebody finds me. Probably not going to have a lot of them, but just a really interesting thought here that nobody else really gets into in the YouTube community. So yeah, P-52 Merlin pilot, balls of brass, of steel, pick your metal. And then you got the hotly debated rover inside the cargo bay of your constellation. Some people are saying it's not going to be in future edits of the constellation Ikea because of the way that they changed the uh, cargo over to the standard freight units. Because it's going to be taking up too much space to bring anything back. But I kind of debate that a bit because I'm thinking to myself with the size of this rover, you know, yes, it will take up a lot of space in that cargo bay. Yes, 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 it will. But you're going to be bringing back large boulders and, and quantities of of jewels and a whole bunch of different types of things. Are you going to be bringing back new species of plants or, or smaller things? You know, I, I think in an exploration ship, you're not going to be bringing back bulk materials. You're going to be bringing back uh, things that are slightly smaller. I mean, when you land on these planets, really, there's not going to be a lot of civilization out there. I mean, I don't think many of them will have tons of civilization. We're going to be bringing home a bunch of, like, booty. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to be landed primarily on planets that are either uninhabited or have scarcity of uh, resources because they are uninhabitable and you can't get down on the planet. Or you're going to find a lot of the uh, materials on, on an inhabited planet, uh, like species of plants and and uh, different types of rocks, smaller rocks. You don't have to bring home a boulder. <laughs> You're bringing home things that nobody's ever seen before. They don't have to be big. The smallest size of molecules and carbons of something's gonna be anything different. It's gonna bring hefty prices. The fact that you found a planet is gonna bring you hefty prices. You found a planet, MFR. <laughs> like, what? You come back home and you got information on a new planet? All hail the king. And you found it with your constellation. All right, let's go over this girl with a fine tooth comb like we always do on the games. Giving you your technicals now. Constellation Ikea comes with four TR5 Arc Elite 500 engines, which I think personally, those suckers got to be that strong because you got to have, you got to be able to move this girl. She's got a little extra cushion in for the pushing. You know, you know what I'm saying? 80,000 kilograms got a big old butt you know what I'm saying <laughs> she needs some help to move also you got a TR3 thrusters you got eight of them TM8 roll flexes all right I like that they're TR3s this thing needs to be flexible those fans that you see those are your three they need you need to be able to move around in this thing if you do get caught uh, you've got your s6 size uh, power plant good 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 liking it for your hard points all right for your hard points you got four uh, they, they come equipped in an S4 uh, M5A lasers, all right, gimbaled. That's nice. But what I really like are the pylon mounts. Say you do get caught in a very bad pace. Two by pylon mounts, 20 missiles each on your rack. That's 40 
missiles. 40. Just do the math on that. Also, I love the turret on the bottom. The man turret, the S4 2 by cf 337 Rhino. Okay, four cranking in your face. And I think that I think that the ability of this turret pilot is gonna be paramount to the success if you do get caught of surviving. And and turret flying is very difficult. Uh, we've seen it on our past videos. Turret flying is very difficult. Uh, on your additional spots, okay? Upgrade to your U-255 uh, power plant. You can upgrade to a 6 uh, S7A generator. And also you can add, uh, obviously you're going to want a jump engine. Uh, the Ursa Rover, expanded fuel tank, long range. This ship, to me, sexy. It's about the sensors. We already went over it. Sensors, stupid. <laughs> this ship, I wouldn't advise flying it alone. If you have to fly it alone, fly it in safe spots. From A to B, a route that's fairly common, a trade route, highly secure, going to a secure planet to a secure planet. I would not risk this flying alone. Comes with a P-52 Merlin slot. So far, so good. Personally, if you're an explorer at heart, highly recommend this ship. I think they will work out an easy user interface panel for us. I'm hoping for an easy user interface panel, but this truly, this ship is for the adventurer. The one who's not afraid to get lost. The one that's not afraid to take the risk for that extreme reward. And this ship, for that role, there's no other like it. Gives me goosebumps when I think about it. I want one. Hell, I want two. What do you think, Techlar Meeps? One of our gamers in our community. Without him, we could not do this video. And he said, Al, I just want two things. One, can you shout out the 127th Anger Angels? There you go, my friend. And the second thing he asked me, can I see her outside? Of course you can, man. <laughs> I want to tell you guys how much you mean to me. I got to know Techlar a hell of a lot better through this process. He's a good guy. I'm sure all of you guys are. Take some time to know your gamers. Getting kind of emotional here for real because the amount of trust that people put into me to do this, to give you this content is amazing and I want to deliver for you all the time, but I need help, guys. I need help to make this serious. I want to make this my living and in order to do that, I need your help on my Patreon page. Just a dollar a month is like $12 a year. It's like two combo meals for real. I need some help so that I can support myself and my family and make this a 24-7 thing for you guys. You guys deserve more content. In order to do that, I need your help, guys. God, she's so beautiful. Look at that ship. My goodness. Anyway, that wraps us up, guys. Stay tuned for our next Star Citizen video and some of our others. Go check out some of my other videos, guys. Peace out. See you on the next vid.